Well, joining us now in an exclusive interview is Blackstone Global co-head of real estate, Kathleen McCarthy. It's so great to have you here on set with us. Thanks, Welcome. Morgan. Thanks for having me. I'm going to start right there. Higher for longer, uh, a, a Fed that has rates elevated. Um, what does this mean for real estate? Can we actually say that we're finding stabilization, even a bottoming in values? Well, we do feel like there's a bottoming happening, and we've said there's no V-shaped recovery. It's not going to be a straight line up from here. But when we look at some of the key pillars of how a recovery comes into place, we do see the cost of capital coming down with spreads coming in. We're seeing more liquidity in markets. And perhaps most importantly for the long term, we are seeing a sharp decline in new supply. So new starts, for example, in logistics and rental housing, where a lot of our capital is focused, down 30 to 75 percent, depending on the market. And so we think that sets up for long term favorable performance on the back of good supply and demand. Well, last time you and I spoke in September um, last year, you had raised a record $30 billion for a global real estate opportunistic fund. I believe you got $65 billion in dry powder for real estate at Blackstone. Are you deploying any of that, especially when you do talk about some of these potential shortages? Absolutely. With all that dry powder, this is the kind of environment when we do some of our best work. And that's because we can combine this capital with the expertise and experience of our team. So if you just look at even the last couple of months, we've announced some really signature Blackstone transactions. We started the year announcing our 51st take private of a company called Tricon Residential, which focuses on high quality residential development and management in Canada and the U.S. Also in data centers, which is one of our highest conviction themes we're most excited about. Uh, we announced a $7 billion joint venture with Digital Realty, where across Europe and the U.S. we're going to build data centers. Um, and that's just benefiting from explosive demand for that kind of digital infrastructure from some of the biggest technology users in the world. Kathleen, I've been hearing that a lot of commercial real estate right now is about quality, whether you're talking about uh, office or commercial or, you know, data center, industrial within that, uh, which is tricky when you have fewer new starts. So how does that play into your strategy and how capital gets used, maybe not to greenfield and build something new, but to improve something existing to get it better lead certified or to get it more uh, attractive and rents higher? Well, I'd say just overall, and you're, you're highlighting that where you invest matters and what you own matters. And we've seen that, of course, in commercial real estate, where traditional office, the story there that so many are focusing on is quite different than the strong performance we continue to see in warehouses and rental housing, data centers, hospitality. And so what we're always trying to do is buy high quality real estate in good locations, but make it better or make the company that owns and operates that real estate better, a better company. And so sustainability is a big part of that. And that's in part because that's where the most attractive tenants want to be. They want to be in real estate that is high quality, that is a place where their people want to come to work and to create and to collaborate. And sustainability can be part of it. But, you know, so much of it is, you know, how do you operate? Do you bring that great customer service? Are you being a partner to your customers in helping them grow and do what they want to do for their end customer? Is the remote work trend that we saw reversing at all, particularly in larger markets? You hear that uh, Gen Y wants to be in the office increasingly. <laughs> Well, I would say I think we continue to see news and evidence that more people are coming back to the office and you can look at turnstile data and just anecdotal evidence of talking to, to companies and CEOs. But we have long believed that we do our best work physically together in the office. We were uh, early openers in July 2020 back in. We're in five days a week. And, and that's because we are feeling that we owe our customers our best work, and we do that when we're together. We're, we are investors. We're trying to create and evolve, and the world's not a static place, and we can't be static either. And so being together certainly helps with that. I'd say equally importantly, our model works on training people. I mean, I'm getting trained every day, uh, and I think that's all done best together. And we're seeing more and more companies recognizing that while for some period of time and maybe for people who have been part of companies for a long time, you can operate remotely. Um, that same thing can't happen in perpetuity and, and particularly for new people.